Bonjour, Atlantis. Another great day in space. Hey, bonjour, uh, all the team on the ground. Uh, what a nice touch for the French this guy on board. I was really thrilled uh, listening to this music on board the complex. Uh. Uh, now, living with uh, all this international crew on board, sometimes I wonder if I am a French, European, or just a uh, citizen of the whole world. This is really a very, very uh, exciting experience here.
interesting weather formation. I guess just watching some tropical storms, I can't really pick out one in particular. Um, and also some sea currents and looking at sun glint and the different uh, patterns and swirls on the ocean, in the middle of the ocean, uh, along uh, islands, things like that are always amazing. Uh, I'll, I'll say go Rockets, and I think the Rockets have a good chance of uh, winning it all. Although I haven't watched a single game because I've been up here uh, since January. Yes, I was wondering if uh, while you're staying long-term in orbit, if you can detect the effects of solar flares or solar radiation, either on your on yourselves or on the motion of the vehicle in orbit. Actually, that's been quite noticeable this uh, last trip. Every flight I've been on, I've, this is my first flight, I have noticed um, flashes at night when I'm sleeping in my uh, in my field of vision. And those are caused by uh, very, very high-speed particles, mostly from the um, cosmic ray background radiation. But also during solar flares, you get uh, these these light trails in your visual field. You know, you're just looking at basically darkness, of course, as you fall asleep, and then you'll see these little flashes in different points of your uh, peripheral vision. Well, recently on this flight, I think, and the other, uh, Sasha has mentioned this to me as well, that um, there's a lot of activity going on right now, and I think Joey also noticed it. And so we're actually seeing trails in our visual field, almost like meteor uh, trails. And um, I tried moving my head around here, and, I, and it changed the orientation of the trails. So I was pretty sure it was localized, you know, to a stream coming through the spacecraft. Are you more or less spiritual than when you first went into space now? I think the same way as everybody else who has been to space. Uh, you enrich yourself because you're so far from Earth. You begin to love it even more. And then when you look in the window, you stop thinking about all the borders, about conflict on Earth. Why? The Earth is one. And when you, when you look, it's so little, we have a very thin layer of atmosphere which protects us from radiation from the sun. And you begin to forget about small earthly problems and you start thinking about different things. And I think the uh, answer could be given in any language around the world from anyone who flies up here. We all feel pretty much the same way. Hello from the space station Mir and the space shuttle Atlantis. Uh, for all of you who are viewing the IMAX film Mission to Mir for the first time, we welcome you and we share with you the thrill of a great mission with our Russian colleagues in space. I'm Commander Charlie Precourt of the SDS-84 crew and we are fortunate enough to be docked right now on board the space station Mir with the Mir-23 crew and we're in the process of continuing the mission that you're about to watch on the IMAX theater. It's a tremendous opportunity for us. We'd like to connect with you as you have the opportunity to share our joys here in space. And we are fortunate enough to be bringing Joe Reninger home from space after his stay on board the Mir and leaving Mike Fole as his replacement. What you're seeing is, a, is continuing today. As we speak to you, as you sit there ready to watch the IMAX, we are continuing to fly in orbit with our colleagues from Russia.